All right, guys, Darren from Honest Money and welcome back to another video. So I think this is my first video for a few months on this channel. In January, I announced that I was working on another project and I wouldn't be releasing any videos for the foreseeable. Well, that project is now coming to completion. So I'm back on this channel and I'm launching a new venture which I'm gonna share with you guys. So in this video, I'm gonna explain him why I've got this stack of hardware next to me. Uh, what I'm gonna be getting involved in, you can probably guess going by what's going on on the rest of the screen at the moment and just talk you through my plans uh, for the next few weeks to see how things go with this venture. So what I'm gonna be engaging in is a bit of crypto mining. So I'm actually gonna be building my own rig. That's why I've got all of this hardware next to me and I'm gonna talk you through that in a moment, talk you through what I've purchased and why I've purchased it. Before I do, I just wanna offer a bit of background. This video is for complete beginners and it's definitely for beginners because I am a beginner myself. I've been involved in crypto for about nine days. So everything I give you is from a beginner's perspective. So hopefully anyone else that's considering this will find it useful seeing someone go through the process with them. So I'm sure many of you guys have heard of cryptocurrencies, crypto mining, uh, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and things like that. So I'm just gonna offer a very basic intro to those before we get into the real meat of the video. So one of the reasons that I'm looking into mining at the moment, because it hasn't really been that viable to mine for the past few years, or at least not with general GPUs, which we've got, got here, is because crypto in general wasn't worth anywhere near what it currently is at the moment. So this is the graph for Bitcoin. So we can see here last year, for the most part, it was trading around the $10,000 mark. And then from the end of 2020, as we've gone into 2021, all the way through to April and May, you can see now it's ranging between 50 to $60,000 per coin. So there's a huge investment in Bitcoin at the moment. And that follows across pretty much all of the cryptocurrency. So for example, Ethereum, which is probably the second biggest at the moment, and also one of the primary drivers behind mining prices increases. And you can see here, this is at an all time high as well recently. So this is up to $4,000 on average last week or two, compared to the long term average of uh, well below $1,000 last year. And even some of what you call the meme coins, um, such as Dogecoin, again, another one that has really spiked up recently. So there is a lot of investment going on with crypto at the moment. There's a lot of new people jumping in and throwing money at and seeing what happens. And I just wanna caveat this video by saying this video is not offering financial advice. For me, I see all of this hardware here purely in speculation territory. Um, I think there's potential to make money in the long term, but certainly if you haven't got money to lose, I think there are probably better business models to consider. But I found Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, and crypto in general really interesting and really exciting when I started looking into it. So that's why I've decided to take the punt put a few thousand pound into it and we'll see how things go over the coming weeks. So for those of you that aren't familiar with crypto, I'm just gonna read through a very basic definition of what it is to give you guys a simple understanding of what I'm looking to do. So a cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency that is secured by cryptography, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. Many cryptocurrencies are decentralized networks based on blockchain technology. So by decentralized, they mean it's not owned by a particular government. So it's not the US government or the UK government or any government, it's decentralized. So it's basically owned by the people that are invested in it. And a blockchain is a distributed ledger enforced by a network of computers. A defining feature of cryptocurrencies is that they are generally not issued by any central authority, rendering them theoretically immune to government interference or manipulation. So that is cryptocurrency. And with regards to mining cryptocurrency, this is my understanding after nine days. So this could be wrong and feel free to correct me in the comments. But generally when you're mining for cryptocurrency, what you're looking to do is to solve a puzzle effectively using your hardware to do so. And once you've done that, if you're the first person to do it, or if the pool you're in is the first people to do that, then you're able to write the next piece of the ledger and everyone gets re rewarded with the relevant cryptocurrency. So if you solve the puzzle for Bitcoin, you get awarded some Bitcoin. So that is why we mine it and that's why we need the hardware and it's GPUs. Now there are other types of cryptocurrency which don't require GPU mining. So there's for example, proof of stake um, and there's another one which is based on nodes or networking, but they use are for other videos. For now, we're just gonna focus on hardware mining using GPUs. Now, if you're already into crypto mining or you've been looking into it, or if you're a PC gamer, 
you'll be fully aware that graphics cards are currently massively overpriced and scalpers are buying them up and they're going for huge money on eBay. I mean, to give an example, next to me, I've got six GeForce RTX 2060s, which are kind of a middle of the range card from at least a year or so ago. So if I just pop these into Amazon and I can show you what the price history has been like for these guys. So let's pick one with a lot of reviews so we know it's been sold for a while. Let's take a look at this 2060 here. I'll wait for my plug in to load and then it will show us the price history. So this is over the last 30 days, but let's do all time. So we can see before things started to go a bit crazy towards the end of last year, this card was being sold for around about 300 pounds. The cheapest it looks like it was sold for is around 2999. At the moment, these are being sold for five, six, 700 pounds, over double what they were going for last year. And some of the more recent graphics cards, such as the 3070s, the 3080s, and the 3090s, are going for two to three thousand pounds on eBay per card. So you can imagine the fact I've got six 2060s there, I have invested a little bit of money, and I'm gonna talk you through the cost in a moment and show you the rig that I've put together. But I just want you to be aware that if you do start investing in this at the moment, you'll be paying massively over the odds, and it may take a very long time to recoup that money, despite the fact that mining is probably the most profitable it's been for a very, very long time. Now, before we go through the hardware that I've purchased, I just wanna talk you through the platform that I plan to use, at least initially, to do some mining with, and it's called nicehash.com, and it's really, really simple to use, and you can make probably 80 to 90% of what you would as if you mined the traditional way. So you can make a good chunk of the money you would but without having to have all the technical know-how. So at the moment on the NiceHash website, they have a list of all the GPUs and how much money on average they're predicted to make that day based on the current rate. So these rates are actually quite a bit down from where they were a couple of days ago. But if we scroll down and find the 2060 that I've got, so there we are, the NVIDIA RTX 2060. At the moment, just mining one of these cards per day should generate around three pound. Or after electricity, around about £2.85. And that's one thing to keep in mind with mining is that after your upfront cost, the main cost you've got is electricity. So I'm paying around 15p per kilowatt hour at the moment. So they've estimated I'd make just under £3 per day per card. Whereas a few days ago, these were making around five to six pound per card per day. So it's worth a while for me to take a punt on this at the moment as six of those work in every day together. You know, with a bit of overclocking and a bit of tweaking, I probably can get that to three pound today based on today's rates. But if we get back to the rates we were a day or two ago where it's five pound per day, potentially this rig could be generating around 30 pound per day, which means it would repay itself with probably three to four months. And if rates do drop to around this level and stay consistent, it will take a bit longer. But I'm happy to do that. And I'll come back to that a bit more in a moment. But firstly, let me just show you the nice hash platform. It's very easy. All you need to do is download it. And it's called the nice hash miner. So let me just open this up. And this is the interface. So it's really, really straightforward. And there are actually two miners that you can use. I'm just showing you a traditional one, and I'll probably go into these more in future videos. But for now, I just wanna show you how potentially simple it can be so that anyone considering mining knows what I'm getting up to and might want to consider it themselves. So once you've downloaded the miner, all you literally need to do is click the play button. This will then open up this window and it will start mining away. So as I'm recording this video, my current PC is mining. Now I've only got a very basic GPU in that PC. So it's not gonna actually make me much money. Or if I run this all day, it might make me say 20p. So it's not really worth doing. But for the new rig, I'm gonna give this a go and see what happens. So that's nice hash. And like I say, I'll probably go into that more in future videos as I learn more about mining and share with you my experience with nice hash. But for now, I'm gonna go back to the hardware and talk you through what I've purchased over the past week and look at some of the components and the cost um, what I've invested into this venture. So this is the part list that I've put together based on all of the components that I've purchased here. So let me just talk you through them and I'll show you which part is which. So up first, we have six graphics cards. Um, three of the, sorry, four of them are from Gigabyte, one's MSI and one's Palette, but they're all GeForce 2060, so they're all pretty much the same graphics cards. And on average, I paid 500 pound per graphics card. I think one of them I paid a little bit extra for. So those are the six graphics cards that you can see there. So you've got four in the same box and these are slightly different, but fundamentally, they're all gonna mine a very, very similar rate and generate very similar returns. Hopefully around three to five pounds per card per day. Maybe more, maybe less, but we'll see what happens in the coming weeks and months. Up next, we have the Wi-Fi dongle, which is this part here. So this is literally just gonna plug in the USB port. Now, a lot of miners will tell you to hardwire it in, and I completely understand that. However, I haven't decided where I'm gonna locate this rig just yet, so I want Wi-Fi 
um, in case I end up putting it somewhere where I don't have a hard wired connection. So a cheap Wi-Fi dongle, that didn't cost very much, $12.99, and that'll be very simple to set up. We then go into things which are a bit more complicated. So we've got the PCIe risers. So these are these things which are in this bag here. Now, without going into too much detail, within your rig, you're gonna have a motherboard. Now, all of these graphics cards are gonna to need to plug into that motherboard. And as you can imagine, these are quite big. So there's no way they're all gonna fit directly onto the motherboard. So what these risers do, are basically provide a connection to the motherboard plus a cable and then a connection to the individual graphics card so that you can mount the graphics cards further away from the motherboard than you usually would. So I've got six risers in there so that I can connect six graphics cards to the motherboard without them having to be right on top of each other. And also the further away they are, the better they're gonna dissipate the heat so they'll have more air circulation as well. We then have, so they cost 48.99. So again, they're much more expensive than they usually be, but you know, you've got to pay. And I've gone for a brand which I think will be good. And that's the same for a lot of this stuff. You can actually get cheaper parts than what I've got at the moment. But if this is something that's gonna be running 24 seven, I wanna make sure it's not gonna burn the house down or it's not gonna fail regularly. So I do spend a bit more on some of the parts than you potentially could if you really wanna kind of strip back the budget. So up next we have the power switch. So this is literally a little click button with some LEDs because we're not gonna put this in a case. So it's not going in a traditional PC case. So you won't have a mechanism to turn it on. So we have this little thing to plug in so we can turn the, the rig on and off. So instead of a case, we've got a power switch and that is $6.99. Up next, we have an Intel Core i5. So I know any of you miners out there are gonna be going, why are you putting an i5 into a mining rig? The whole idea with a mining rig is to keep costs down. So maybe you wanna put in something like a Celeron or a Pentium or even an i3. However, due to the shortage of components, I could only get a different type of motherboard and that needed a newer processor. And I couldn't actually get an i3 processor, which are the cheapest one in the range. So I had to get the i5. Now I didn't mind spending a bit extra for the i5 as it does come with a heatsink and fan to keep it cool. And also it has onboard graphics. So I can use this if I wanna to connect to a monitor without having to compromise any of the main GPUs as the CPU has onboard graphics as well. So that was 155 pound, which is a fair amount of money to spend on a CPU for a mining rig. But like I say, with the shortage of components, I had to do that to be able to put this rig together. So to go with that, we have the motherboard, which I've got here. So this is the Asus Prime Z390. So this supports up to, I believe it supports up to seven connections. So there's six proper connections, and then there's another one that can be converted. So I'm gonna be running six cards initially. Again, this isn't a cheap motherboard. There are other motherboards more designed for mining that support maybe 12 cards or 18 cards, and there are other brands, but it's all about availability at the moment. So I wasn't too, miffed with paying 159 pound to get a decent motherboard. I trust ASUS, I've used them many times before, and I think that motherboard will provide a solid foundation for this rig. We then have the PSUs, which are the power supply units. Now, usually within your PC, you'd have one PSU, but to power all of those graphics cards, you need a lot more power. So you have to do the maths, you have to look at how much power these things actually need, and then make sure you have a big buffer above that as you don't want to be running your PSUs at 100% capacity. You want to be running them closer to 50, 60% capacity. So I've got two PSUs here. So again, I've overspent probably, I've got some Corsair RM750s, which are a fairly high-end PSU. You know, you can get cheaper ones, but I've got two of those. So at 750 watts, we'll have a combined total of 1,500 watts, which should be plenty enough to run all of those graphics cards without putting too much load on both of those PSUs. And like I said, if it can be running 24 seven, I don't want my PSUs maxed out. And I also have this little component here, which allows me to connect both PSUs together. So when I use the power switch, both of these will come on as only one of them will connect to the motherboard. Um, so those were quite expensive, 193 pound for the pair of them. We didn't have some RAM, so RAM isn't overly important. I've gone for at least eight gigabyte so these were pretty cheap. I've gone for Crucial as I trust cr Crucial RAM. So we've got two sticks of four gigabyte. So they'll run um, as DDR4 RAMs and eight gigabyte in total, only 40 pound one of the cheaper components. And the same goes for the SSD. I've got a Crucial SSD, which 500 gigabytes is an overkill for a rig, but it was, I think it was one pound more expensive than the 256 gigabyte variant. So I thought, well, I'll buy that. And if mining doesn't work out, at least I can actually put together a reasonably decent PC with these parts. 
Uh, we then got delivery for one of them, so just for the cost purposes and the module, which I showed you there, which was so that both of the PSUs powered up together. And then finally, we actually have the chassis or the rig, which all of this is gonna connect to, um, but it hasn't been delivered yet. So I'm gonna pop up a photo of the one I've ordered. Effectively, it's a metal frame, so there'll be somewhere to put the motherboard in the middle um, with two trays on the side to put the power supply units on. And then the rail across the top is what these graphics cards will connect to. So that's all of the hardware I've purchased. I've never built one of these rigs before. I have built a few PCs in the past, so hopefully that's gonna provide some experience to help me through this process. Um, and if you wanna see me document that build in a future video, hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. So overall cost for this rig so far is around 3,827 pound. Now, if you put the GPUs to one side, you could probably have got this build down to under three and a half thousand by scrimping on some of the parts. But in the current climate and the fact it's gonna be running 24 seven, I want that reliability, I have paid a little bit over the odds. Now I can reclaim back 622 pound as I am VAT registered. So my overall cost is 3,205 pound. So that's how much I need to make back before I break even. So that's why I've got the ROI total, which is your return on investment total. So if I can make 30 pound a day, you know, 3,200 divided by 30 pound, probably around 105 to 106 days, which isn't too bad, just over three months to get back your investment, and then effectively you're printing money. Now I don't expect rates to stay that high forever, so I'm not actually realistically expecting to break even for maybe six months or nine months or even longer. You don't know what's gonna to happen to the mining rates, but it's certainly something that's interesting. I'm looking forward to giving it a go. And even if mining rates do drop off and even if GPU prices do come down, this hardware is always going to retain some value. So it should never be the case I'm just gonna lose 100% of my investment. Even if mining rates drop through the floor and I just threw all of this on eBay, I'm sure I'd recoup at least 50% of the cost. So if I can just get to the point where I've recouped 50% of this investment to start with, then on top of the hardware cost, I pretty much are gonna be breaking even within a couple of months, hopefully. Now mining rates are expected to drop off as we enter July as one of the biggest coins, which is Ethereum, which is driving the growth behind mining at the moment. They've got some changes coming in, which is one that's called 1559. And I'll let you do your own research because it's too much information to go in in this video. So I do expect mining rates to drop off after July. However, having said that, if I can recoup half of the investment by July, I'll be in a very good position. And also I'm looking forward to actually doing it and documenting it as I go. So I hope you guys have found this useful, seeing this from a complete beginner's perspective. If you did and you wanna see more from me as I go through this process, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you scroll down and hit that like button as it makes a big difference to the algorithm. And I'll see you guys in the next video.